Rogue War is really one of those rare examples in gaming where something is so bad that it's actually good, at least as far as I'm concerned. Utterly panned by critics and most gamers on release, it's an adaption, kind of, of the book of the same name based on the escapades of real-life Navy SEAL Richard Marcinko, referred to in the game as Dick. How appropriate. Developed by Rebellion Software, who usually know what the hell they're doing when it comes to game development, it's easily one of the worst FPS games of 2009 and also definitely one of the crappiest FPS games ever made. But somehow it just manages to also be supremely entertaining and at times downright hilarious because of how over the top the whole thing is. And also how ludicrous some of the dialogue in the game is as well. Voiced by Mickey Rourke, which kind of tells you all you need to know about what kind of character Dick's going to be, it takes place in 1986, though you'd hardly know it, as Dick is sent into North Korea with two other Navy SEALs to recon a missile factory. Once they've landed and shortly after Dick explains through narration how smart and capable his two teammates are, they're then both killed by an exploding grenade that they spent their remaining moments staring at like complete idiots. From this point on, the game moves at a pretty quick pace as you progress from mission to mission, uncovering some kind of plot involving both the Russians and the North Koreans, as they're developing some kind of missile deterrent system making them relatively safe from any kind of retaliation if they should happen to instigate any war with the US. Dick's got no love for commie scum, so he takes both the Russians and Koreans out with extreme prejudice. The general rule of thumb is that you can quite literally kill every single other person you see in this game with no consequences. The gameplay is a mix of both stealth and shooting, with that option being left up to the player and there's not really any ramifications whatsoever based on your choices. Shooting is pretty standard fare, it uses a similar system to the combat found in the Rainbow Six Vegas games, where you move around with a mouse and keyboard in first person mode and can kind of snap to cover when near certain objects. At this point the camera shifts to a third person perspective, giving you a better view of the surrounding area, allowing you to pop out and take shots at nearby enemies at the cost of accuracy. You can of course just play it as a standard first person shooter, crouching behind cover conventionally and just pressing the spacebar button by default to snap to iron sights, and shoot enemies in a more traditional manner. It's a shame that there's not all that many weapons to play around with, I mean all you get is a couple of shotguns, both of which are pretty damn crappy. There's a few different automatic weapons like an AK-47 as well as the option to throw grenades. There's a sniper rifle as well, which never becomes necessary. I mean, I only used it twice out of boredom to break up the tedium, but most of the time you're shooting enemies at medium to close range, making its scope and reduced field of view a bit of a handicap. On top of that, the game's also got a regenerating health system where the screen starts to lose color as you're closer to death, making it about as generic as it could possibly get. But I mean, look, it's not horrible in any sense of the word, it's all just generic. Enemies will mostly just take cover behind some kind of box or crate or nearby wall, popping out every few seconds to take a few shots at you before popping back into cover. I think maybe once or twice I saw someone throw a grenade my way, but that was about it. You die pretty damn quickly from gunfire too, but the enemies with shotguns are really the only enemies that provide any kind of threat as they're able to kill you in a couple of hits. Otherwise, it's not the kind of thing that's really going to put your FPS skills to the test and abusing the cover and the regenerating health system means most of the game is a breeze. Stealth, on the other hand, is also about as basic as you're ever going to see in a shooting game. Detection, as far as I can tell, works entirely offline of sight and little else. You can crouch to muffle your footsteps, though enemies didn't seem to detect me when I was standing anyway, so I never really bothered with this. Most missions start off with the enemies completely unaware to your presence and often conveniently facing the opposite direction, staring off into nothingness like brain-dead morons. At which point you can press the E button behind them and perform some kind of takedown. Now I say takedown, though that's kind of an understatement. What really happens is you press E to brutally murder someone. Dick will often stab someone repeatedly in the guts or slam their head into a wall or other object that happens to be nearby. If they're standing near a ledge, he'll pick them up and just throw them the hell over the edge as they scream, plummeting to their death. You can perform these during combat as well, during which point you're invulnerable to enemy attacks and if there's enough enemies close enough, you can chain them all together and often come out of it without a scratch. Now I'm not expecting Dick to just give them a little love tap or put them to sleep or anything, but it would have made him seem a little bit more like an actual soldier if he'd used, I don't know, any kind of restraint. Instead he comes across as some kind of violent psychopath that takes glee in murdering people as violently as possible. Apparently there's about 25 of these in the entire game, which seem to be randomized, but also dependent on the position of the enemy when you perform the kill. 
to be honest though, this is all of what makes Rogue Warrior so entertaining, is just how much of a macho dickbag they portrayed Marcinko as. It's almost like a throwback to the FPS protagonist of yesteryear in the way that he's constantly talking shit during combat and shouting out insults and profanities towards the enemies. Stop dead, motherfucker, you fucking amateurs. Things like calling the Koreans cocksuckers, you know, telling them to suck his big, fat, hairy balls, or just shouting out four-letter words in frustration when he takes damage during gunfights. Goddamn cock breath coming, motherfuckers! Some of the dialogue during cinematics is hilarious and actually had me laughing out loud. And I've also lost count of the amount of times he called someone an asshole for no particular reason, he just felt like calling that person an asshole. That's the factory. The great leader must have a tiny dick. But the key difference between Marcinko and characters like Duke Nukem and Lo Wang is that what those guys said was witty. It was some kind of pun or a line from a movie that fitted in with their character. The kind of thing Marcinko says isn't clever, it's just him, like I said, telling someone to suck his dick. It's the kind of thing you'd expect a 12-year-old kid to say to someone on Xbox Live or Gary's Mod. What a shithole. How the fuck did I end up in Jersey? Now visually, I'm not sure what engine this game runs on, it's supposed to be some kind of proprietary engine created by Rebellion, but the closest comparison I could make is that it looks like the kind of thing you'd see on a very early game running on the Unreal 3 engine. On that note, it probably goes without saying, but the game doesn't look all that great, nor really did it for its time. You'll be shooting the same looking two or three enemies over and over, and throughout practically every single mission, the texture work and the general level of details pretty piss poor. About the only thing they nailed is Marcinko's likeness, he actually looks pretty damn close to what he looks like in real life, down to the beard and everything. Performance wise though, Rogue Warrior launches fine, but takes a bit of screwing around with to remove some pretty bad stuttering. And even then, when you've tried the fix available online, it still hitches from time to time. I think part of what makes Rogue Warrior so bearable is the fact that it's over so quickly. It really does feel like you're taking part in this crappy, directed DVD movie. And ironically, the length of the whole thing is about the same duration as the movie, finishing up in just under the two hour mark. And that's just the right amount of time to see the protagonist stab someone to their death so much before it starts to get boring. I mean, what I distinguish as a bad game is something that's just bad across the board to the point that it's just not even functioning properly to begin with. Rogue Warrior is bad, but it also works mostly properly from start to finish, and you can play it without the game crashing or shitting itself every five minutes. And that's where I draw the line where it moves into that territory of being so bad that it's good. To me, it's like that video game equivalent of a dumb action movie that we all watched as kids. Movies like Commando or Bloodsport, I mean, we all know that they're not going to win any kind of awards or go down in history as any kind of masterpiece, but they were dumb, loud and entertaining in some form. And that's kind of how I see Rogue Warrior. Whether or not it was intentional to make it as over the top and stupid as it is, is irrelevant. There's something just so enjoyable about something as bad as this. I'm feeling the heat already. There were times in this game where I couldn't believe what I was hearing and seeing, and my only regret was that I didn't have someone sitting next to me to share it with. In the same way that I could turn to my best friend and laugh at the end of Commando when John Matrix threw a pipe through Bennett's chest. So if you ever see this one on sale, and it will be on sale, honestly, I'd say check it out just for the hell of it. Just know what you're getting yourself into and take it on with that mindset, and there's plenty of value to be had here. Goddamn cock breath coming, motherfuckers!